Be very quiet. I'm hunting rabbits. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Looney Tunes running gags. Beep, beep. For this list, we're looking at the funniest and most legendary recurring comedy bits from the Looney Tunes and Merry Melodies series. What do you think is the looniest running gag? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Michigan J. Frog Sings This top hat wearing amphibian only appeared in one Golden Age cartoon. Everybody do the Michigan ride. Everybody likes the Michigan ride. Yet he not only emerged as an iconic character, but supplied one of WB's most memorable running gags. In 1955's One Froggy Evening, the seemingly simple frog springs to life with the boisterous voice of nightclub singer Bill Roberts. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my ragtime gal. Send me a kiss by water. Baby, my heart's on fire. The problem is he'll only perform for one unfortunate soul, who is determined to share the frog's gifts with the world, for a profit. With each failed attempt, the man digs himself deeper into debt. Counting his losses, the man abandons Michigan, only so another unsuspecting schmuck can repeat the process. The gag continued in Tiny Toons and 1995's Another Froggy Evening, paving the way for Michigan to become the WB's mascot for a period. We were sailing along. Moonlight Bay. Number 9. Foghorn Leghorn Rants Foghorn Leghorn started as a supporting player, being the target of the chicken hunting Henry Hawk. What's go I say, what's going on here? Well, I don't stand there with your beak open. Say something. It wasn't long until Foghorn stole the spotlight, ranting his way to top billing. Going forward, most shorts revolved around Foghorn finding new ways to antagonize the barnyard dog. Unlike some other Looney Tune rivalries, these two were almost equally matched, leaving us to wonder who would come out on top. Whoever won, we could always count on one thing, Foghorn going on a tirade, complete with an I say or that's a joke, son. Now that, I say that's no way for a kid to be wasting his time reading that long-haired gobbledygook. No Looney Tune loved the sound of his own voice more, driving others to do everything in their power to shut him up. Sometimes, even the cartoon itself would cut Foghorn off mid-rant. My pa used to tell me shut up and I'd shut up. I wouldn't say nothing. One time Don near starved to death. Wouldn't tell him I was hungry! Number 8. Yosemite Sam Swearing Yosemite Sam was often compared to his creator, Frizz Freeling. What's up? Why, you ornery fub-bearing critter? This is one of them that train robbery holders. Rarely was either the tallest man in the room, but both had fiery tempers that could blow the roof off. Of course, given the Hayes Code, Sam couldn't say certain curse words that might have been more common around Termite Terrace. The Red Hot Outlaw would become synonymous with his own brand of swearing, from rackin' frackin' to rassafrassin'. Rackin' frackin' paracotta We especially love the short From Hair to Air, where Sam must keep his temper under control. Although, he can't resist letting a few non-obscenities slip. <gasps> that dirty Perkish Harkaback Flacken Porton Philip Bucket Martin Perkaluma Burton Dirty Boston Atten Martin and Adipo. For the most part, Sam's colorful vocabulary doesn't require a bleep button, but he does know a few legitimate curse words. Remember that time he went to H-E double hockey sticks? I'll get the critter this time. I'll send him to hell. Oh, 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 pardon my language. Number 7. Everyone wanting to get away from Pepe Le Pew. Nowadays, Warner Brothers likes to pretend that Pepe doesn't exist. Killies? Ah, une belle femme scon criole. Whether it's 2023 or 1945, though, one thing remains consistent. Everyone wants to distance themselves from Pepe. For humans, it's because of the French skunk stench, which he's oblivious to. The clueless Pepe also can't tell the difference between a fellow skunk and a black cat with a painted white stripe. You will be my blushing bride. Oh, how sweet. You are blushing for Pepe. <laughs> Darling, you will love Paris. Although Pepe's pursuit of Penelope Pussycat has divided modern audiences, critics often overlook one element of this running gag. Things rarely work out for Pepe. Sometimes he ends up alone. Other times, Penelope turns the tables on him, sending Pepe running for the hills. There 
there's still humor to be found in Pepe's cartoons, as long as you remember that he is a cautionary tale. No, no, please, mon chéri, do not erase me, the void. She is cold and dark and... Number six, I'm hunting wabbits. Often cast as a hunter, Elmer Fudd opens many of his shorts addressing the audience. Shh, be very, very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. By now, we all know why we have to be quiet. He's hunting rabbits, or as Elmer would say, wabbits. Elmer has almost always struggled with pronouncing his R's and L's, substituting them for a W. Although Elmer has no problem identifying wabbit tracks, bugs can easily deceive him with an attractive getup. Once the wig comes off, hunting season is back on. I'll kill the wabbit! A wise storm! As much as Elmer wants to catch himself a wabbit, there's an element of remorse whenever he seemingly does bugs in. This goes to show that at his core, Fudd is a sympathetic fellow, yet he suffers from the fatal flaw of never learning his lesson. Oh, what have I done to you, old friend? Number five, I ta I ta putty tat. Sylvester has a couple of rivals, on more than one occasion mistaking Hippity Hopper for a giant mouse, but you cannot top his futile pursuit of Tweety. I told I told a Sylvester actually wasn't the first putty tat that Tweety saw in his 1942 debut. I I I However, a classic duo was born in the Oscar-winning Tweety Pie, which first paired the cute canary with Sylvester, or Thomas as he was called here. As adorable as Tweety and his catchphrases are, he's not as innocent as he looks or sounds. He always takes delight in seeing Sylvester get his comeuppance, usually at the hands of Granny. The dynamic finds an unlikely balance, as we don't want to see Tweety eaten, yet we feel bad whenever Sylvester is left saying, Suffering suckatass! Suffering suckatass! You didn't have to overdo it! Number 4. Coyote vs. Roadrunner Like Sylvester, we empathize with Wile E. Coyote, but not to the point that we want him to succeed. Sometimes I feel very sorry for the coyote. Sometimes I wish he'd catch him. Told through visuals and sound, virtually every short follows a classic formula with the coyote's pursuit of the Roadrunner backfiring. Although the speedy bird is his target, the coyote's true enemies are the ineffective Acme Corporation, his own obsessive nature, and gravity. Acme, the only Batman outfit worn by bats. Chuck Jones had several rules concerning these characters, a standout being the coyote is always more humiliated than harmed by his failures. Perhaps nothing was more humiliating than repeatedly hearing the Roadrunner utter beep beep before darting off. Even when Wiley finally caught the Roadrunner in 1980's Super Sonic, He's left on a humiliating note rather than a triumphant one. Number 3. Duck Season, Rabbit Season Although Daffy frequently clashes with bugs, the egotistical duck is his own worst enemy. Nowhere is this more apparent than in the hunting trilogy where Daffy repeatedly sets himself up for failure. While outwitting Elmer Fudd isn't much of a challenge, Daffy is never a match for Bugs' clever wordplay. That, sir, is an unmitigated fabrication. It's rabbit season. Duck season. As the two go back and forth on whether it's rabbit season or duck season, Daffy inevitably falls victim to pronoun trouble and reverse psychology. I say it's duck season, and I say fire! Just when Daffy thinks that he's won, he finds his bill on the wrong side of his head. Whether Bugs and Daffy are competing over stardom or survival, you can expect the competition to end with the duck staring down the sly rabbit, telling him that he's despicable. You're despicable. Number 2. Ebony, 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 that's all, folks! Porky Pig first stuttered his way into the hearts of audiences in 1935, establishing himself as Termite Terrace's star character. Although his popularity would eventually be surpassed by Daffy and especially Bugs, Porky still got the last word. Porky may have the most famous outro of any cartoon character, bursting from a drum and attempting to say the end. That's all, folks! As is often the case with Porky, though, the sentence ultimately goes in another direction. Porky might not have been the first Looney Tune to say that's all, folks, but he made the line his own with a signature delivery. 
Since then, many others have attempted to take Porky's place, including Michael Jordan. However, nobody closes a cartoon quite like Porky does. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Wrong turn at Albuquerque. Bugs should just vacation in Albuquerque more often. I wonder, uh, you know, I just bet we should have turned left at Albuquerque, and then maybe a right turn at La Jolla. Speedy Gonzalez speeding away. He's not called the fastest mouse in all Mexico for nothing. Ole, arriba, epa, epa, arriba, andale. <laughs> Big Chungus. Bob Clampett couldn't have anticipated this becoming a meme, or memes existing someday. <laughs> Taz munching on everything in sight. When you see a brown tornado zooming by, try not to get caught in his mouth. Marvin the Martian trying to blow up the Earth. When he doesn't hear a kaboom, he gets very angry. Where's the kaboom? There was supposed to be an earth-shattering kaboom. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one. Yeah, what's up, Doc? While a few prototype versions of the character had already appeared, 1940's A Wild Hair is widely considered the first true Bugs Bunny short. What's up, Doc? In addition to Bugs's newly refined look and Mel Blanc getting the voice down, director Tex Avery suggested a line that would go down in history. Avery based the line on an old Texas saying, although he hadn't planned on turning it into a catchphrase. Okay, Wabbit, now I got you. What's up, Doc? What's up, Doc was only made more iconic thanks to Bugs's carrot munching, a gesture that's said to have been based on Clark Gable in It Happened One Night. Bugs immediately won over audiences with these three words, becoming a staple of his cartoons. Ironically, though, he's only encountered a few characters who can identify as Doc. Hello, don't say it. What's up, Doc? He said it. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.